All right, guys, so I think we are in a much needed update in regards to our previous video that we made in regards to Bitcoin Zen. So stick around till the end of the video. We're going to go over all that information, what's going to be happening in regards to the, uh, again, the FOMC meeting, the Fed. We're going to be talking all about that, what to expect in the next upcoming month and where you should be hedge hedging your position overall. So let's go ahead and get started in regards to Bitcoin, guys. So we can see on the three day. Uh, we are seeing the 21 and 55 day uh, basically starting to converge uh, as long as we're closing below $26,535. Now, just keep in mind, guys, you can get this uh, EMA uh, moving average uh, indicator. It's free on TradingView. Uh, and uh, you can apply the info panel box, which will give you a bit of help in determining the trend uh, momentum overall in the markets. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on to what we were discussing in our previous last video. Now, I know it's been about four for five days since I did upload a video. And the reason being is because I wanted to see a big actual move before I come out and, and talk about uh, the market overall. Because, you know, going over the same things over and over again, you know, trending sideways can get a little bit boring. And I feel like I'll be repeating myself. But with that being said, if we go on the daily time frame, guys, we can see we did actually hit our main resistance target that we actually needed to get above, which was around 27,500 area. Now, the reason being this is a very key critical area is because we've talked about it on so many times and so many occasions is that this trend has been been building since March. OK, March of 2023. And this is the the midline of us actually getting a bit bullish in regards to the market where buyers can come in push us a lot higher and then we can confirm again that trend change overall uh, in this mid region that we've been building since March. Now with that being said, again we are coming to a pivotal point with the with the Fed meeting which is going to be happening in roughly about uh, 57 minutes or so and we can see the the consensus is that there's going to be 99% chance that there is not going to be a rate hike and that we're actually going to stall and that there is 1% chance that there could be an actual rate hike. Now, I do believe, again, Jerome Powell is going to come out and stay stagnant in regards to this. Uh, if, again, they come out and actually raise interest rates, this actually could spell very good for, again, the DXY, which will gain a bit of a strength in regards to the market. However, I do foretell that the market the market in regards to the DUXY is actually telling us something here. Because if we look at the uh, stochastics real quick, we can see that we are in overtop territory. Again, coming in around 92-ish area on the DXY, as you can see right here. And you are actually putting in, again, uh, regular uh, bearish divergence, meaning an actual trend change, uh, while you're putting in lower highs uh, on the price chart. And you're putting in higher highs on the on the uh, on the, on the price here. So you're putting uh, lower highs on the oscillator while you're putting in higher highs on price action. Now we can also see the MACD is actually starting to uh, turn to the downside. We are uh, getting that cross as long as again we're below 105.36. We're going to actually continue to fall. Uh, lower. Now, with that being said, I do want to just uh, re-show this uh, Fibonacci key levels. Now, you can see that, again, the, the DXY has been a nice uptrend, taking off that previous lower high coming in again back in uh, June of 2023. With that being said, you can see higher highs and higher lows on the lower time frames, looking like a very healthy, nice uptrend. Now, where could that next support structure really come in? The next support structure that I'm putting in in regards to the next higher low for the DXY will be coming in around the 236 area to the uh, so 236 area, which is around the 1037 to uh, 104.22. So as long as the DXY can actually maintain these areas for the next higher low, then I th don't think that again we've broken some key structured area on the lower time frames. For the DXY, and this actually could spell very bad overall for Bitcoin trending downwards from here on out, and maybe finding support around the twenty-four thousand dollar area. Now, if the Fed again comes out, again you know pivoting overall, again Bitcoin does have an opportunity to blow away from the Smith region, and then more likely scenario is retest that thirty thousand dollar area. Now, I do want to move on to some of the strategies. Again, guys, I do show you all these strategies. So if you've been making notes.
sometimes I may not come out with a video in time where these strategies can be applied because they're so time sensitive. So I give you this data for free, how to apply these strategies uh, by following me on x.com and by watching my videos, guys. So I'm going to show you uh, something here, which um, again is applying the strategy 21 indicate, uh, uh, stra sorry, applying the strategy 21, which I'll bring, uh, present to you the statistical data for that. Uh, so the data uh, is basically a neutral direction trade, meaning that again, you have to have a bias in terms of where the, where the markets will be heading, but we are presented with the following data. So the upside target is around 4.66% with a downside of 7.81%. Now, in order for the conditions to actually be met, you want to have the BBWB indicator 17 or below with a range of delta hike in the sheet candle close above the blue or yellow line in this case. So we can see here the conditions were actually met. You can see the, um, again, the hike in the sheet actually closed above this particular yellow line here and you had actually low BBWP readings on this particular indicator right here. With that being said, this so far has given you about roughly about 3.64%, which is a bit lower than the average, again, uh, the average data in regards to the strategy, the average would be about 4.66%. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, again, we're looking for a greater pullback to the 21 EMA on the six hour before an actual continuation, but a 4.66% would bring you just roughly around $27,781. Again, you're kind of playing within that mid-region, guys, since coming back of February. Uh, again, so with that being said, so those are the targets for this particular strategy. Again, so far, we've seen about 3.57%. And for you to actually to start taking profits, you want to see PMARP, again, get above uh, around 78 uh, percentile or higher for you to start taking profits. So as you can see, PMRP above 78 for you to take profit. We've already met those conditions, so you should have already been taking profits on the strategy. Now, there is another strategy in regards to this, which is the strategy 20. This is on the eight hourly. Uh, with this one, I'll just present you the data as well too. Uh, so this one is actually saying, uh, again, uh, to the upside, 4.93%. Uh, so this is actually a long strategy, uh, which has a 62% uh, uh, strike rate, where this will work out for the uh, the long side of things, not the short end. Uh, so you have a 4.93% to the upside with a downside target of 3.31% on average. Now, for you to enter the conditions for this, you want to see BBWP uh, below 30 and the AMA uh, above the midline on the MACD. So you're using these two indicators, so the BBWP right here, guys, with the MACD, again, which is free. All these indicators, guys, are free on TradingView. So you want it to turn from red to green uh, above this uh, midline right here. So it's already above this midline, the EMAs. You want to go from red to green with low BBWP, again, below, again, 30. So, so far, uh, for us to see 4.93 percent that will put us around twenty eight thousand dollars so very close twenty seven seven hundred to twenty eight thousand dollars same thing with this particular strategy guys so far we've seen roughly about 2.75 percent from where the conditions actually have been met now the uh take profit uh conditions have already been met with pmrp again so pmrp uh conditions on this one is 85 and above so we've already seen about 100 percentile or 93 percentile on this one. So you should have already been taking profits on this. Again, this is applied on the eight hourly gas. So there have been a couple of strategies, again, that I give you for free here, guys, that you can apply to maximize your profits in uncertain times so that you can capitalize on, again, the long term when the bull markets actually do start. Again, so those are the two strategies. Uh, let's move on to Zen real quick, guys with the range delta indicator again the 12 hourly uh what we usually see with this is that every time we're getting rejected by the 55 ema on the 12 hourly as you guys can see here one two three rejection after rejection and uh, the last rejection came in just roughly around here which was around september of uh, 2023 september 07 and what do you what do you what do you guess is that we're continuing to essentially play this downside target and uh again my pattern is still continuing to come true, guys. 
is that our next fib support level is going to be coming around the 236 area which uh, puts you around the 347 uh, price for zen um, again, I, again, I'm not predicting anything, guys. These are the statistical probabilities that I provide you with. You can do the same as well, too. I'm not doing anything special. If you put the time and effort, guys, into your strategies, you can become very profitable overall. You have to have an entry, exit, and uh, take profit when you're actually going to be taking profits. Should you actually stay in the trade? I provide you with all these details, guys. These strategies I give you has all that, okay? And um, again, the risk management, always apply risk management. But at the end of the day, what we're saying is that from where this was actually met is that we're going to continue to see a 43% drop to the three, 236 Fibonacci retracement. Okay, now we can see there is no more support structure left for Zen, guys. The, the key support structures that were there for Zen, we broke below, you know, you know, sighting before that big actual move that we had back in, again, March leading all the way into April, that big whole month. And then we just completely kept putting in lower lows and lower highs and continuing that actual downtrend. The trend is your friend, guys. The trend is your friend. So with that being said, I want to leave you off with this. Okay, the uh, again, the CPI data for Canada. Again, because, again, North America uh, with the states and Canada are so cl closely tied economically. Uh, it is very important to look at this data. So the CPI data for Canada actually came in higher than expectation. So inflation is still on the rise, okay? They still have not had control of inflation. So leading into the next quarter, guys, I expect that inflation will come in higher than expectation, which will more likely sway the probabilities of a more likely or another rate hike, okay? Another rate hike for again the, the the fed and that basically spells very good for the dxy and that actually puts us for another higher low for more likely for the dxy in the meantime and then to continue on in a, an uptrend from here on out other than that guys i'll leave you off with this i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up until next time bros as always stay profitable